Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about emotions. So emotions are really a profoundly important way of understanding interpersonal communication because they are such an important part of how we um, shape our thoughts and perceptions about the world, but we tend to underestimate them in a lot of ways. Um, they really have an important impact on our communication. Um, negative emotions are typically suppressed or vented, which don't really yield to great outcomes. So being better able to manage your emotions and understand how you process emotions um, individually is going to really help you in sort of all areas of life, in your ability to maintain relationships, um, in, your, in your job life, um, and just really overall happiness. So I'm going to talk about some different, some characteristics of emotions, kind of the difference between, between emotions and moods, um, and bring up some of the major emotions, um, and talk a little bit more specifically about some of the more challenging emotional um, responses. So the key characteristics of emotions are that they're really an, atten an intense reaction to an event. Um, it involves interpreting meeting, um, becoming uh, cycle. Um, physiologically aroused, labeling the experience as an emotion, so you really kind of have to be like, I'm mad. Um, managing your reactions and then communicating through some kind of emotional display and disclosure. Um, they're very reactive. Um, it's about sort of responding to something specific in your environment. Um, it really is kind of an arousal state. It, it brings the kind of fight or flight responses. Um, and it's always sort of form, formulated around our previous experiences of things. Um, emotional management is a really important part of becoming a um, effective communicator um, and this is really where we reflect outward what we're feeling inside through communication of some kind and we can do that in positive ways um, and we can also do this in ways that may not be so beneficial to us or those around us. Um, Emotional sharing, much of interpersonal communication consists of sharing with other people um, our perceptions of our emotions. Um, and that's a key point there, right? We, we're not always totally aware of, of the emotions that we're feeling, but um, a large portion of our communication deals with how, how we think we feel. Um, and people share between 75 and 95% of their emotional experiences with at least another person. Um, so that's kind of a, lo a lot of communication dedicated to it. Um, and this is an important thing to realize because um, we can have what's called an emotional contagion, which is where we spread our emotions to other people. And this is really kind of a cool thing in a lot of ways, meaning that if we're happy, secure, wonderfully sort of um, conscious of our emotions, um, people, we can spread that to other people. Our happiness can spread. But if we're, if we're angry, um, anger can spread to other people, and that's um, that's not a theory. Like that really happens. So um, that's an important thing to kind of remember when we're, when we're talking about emotions and communication. Now, emotions are are different um, than feelings and moods. Feelings are kind of short term emotional responses to things. Um, they're they sort of generate a limited amount of. A, of um, arousal to something. And we experience dozens of them every day. Emotions are also different than moods. So moods are kind of low intensity states of being that kind of can be longer um, lasting than, than a specific emotion. Um, moods are really um, important for our perceptions of other people. Um, positive moods lead to positive perceptions of other people. Whereas negative moods tend to make us think everyone else is terrible. But emotions are really, you know, intense reactions to things. So surprise, joy, disgust, anger, fear, sadness. Um, and these are kind of from a Western perspective, primary emotions. And other cultures may have different primary emotions. But those really are the central ones that we really feel are, are strong emotional responses to things. Cultural influences, gendered influences, and personality differences are all going to change sort of how emotions are processed and understood. Um, so you'll, you'll want to look into that into your book. Um, but um, but and managing your emotions is what um, is central to what we call emotional intelligence. So when you're able to reflect on cultural 
um, gendered and personal differences in, in how you manage emotions or how you feel about emotions, um, you can start to have a higher emotional intelligence, which leads you to be able to have a more acute understanding of your emotions, um, the ability to see things from another person's perspective. So empathy, which is so central to um, having good listening skills and good communication skills, um, and it can just sort of help you harness your emotional states in ways um, that create better decision making, communication, and help your relationships in general with other people. Um, a couple of things to know about um, sort of how we manage our emotions. Um, anger is about, is often suppressed or vented. Um, as, as a lot of other emotions are, but, but suppression is where we kind of inhibit our thoughts, arousal, and outward displays, um, whereas venting kind of lets these emotions dominate our experience of a particular event. So usually suppression um, is, it can be good in some situations, like if, if you're really, really mad at your boss, you probably shouldn't just like really succumb to anger and just like tell everyone what you think about them. Um, but, um, especially with anger, suppression can lead to even health problems. Um, so you really want to find an effective way of managing that. Um, venting, like I said, allows your emotions to just kind of come out, um, and dominate your experience of a particular moment. Um, this can be positive, but we, you know, want to vent, um, in healthy ways as well. And venting, uh, negative emotions such as anger can also be detrimental. Um, sort of succumbing to anger, right, cannot necessarily be a great thing for any for other people or for ourselves. Um, really, the the way that you want to manage difficult emotions is repraisal, which is actively changing how you think about the meaning of sort of the situation that makes you feel a certain way. Um, and this occurs in two specific steps. The first is to call to mind the positive aspects of the encounter. So say every time you see your mother or something, you, you get mad about a certain event. Um, you want to call to mind the positive aspects of that person or that encounter. Like, I love my mother. Here are the wonderful things about her. Um, and number two, you want to consider the short and long-term consequences of your actions. So if you're going to be rude to your mother, um, that might create a real you know, disconnection between you. Um, and that might have really long-term impacts on both your own sense of happiness as well as your mother's. Um, and really, um, if, if you're trying to manage anger, I mentioned briefly that venting can be kind of detrimental as well as suppression. And the reason why is that anger, when you vent anger, sometimes it can make you more angry, right? If you're like, I'm just going to bring this up, right? And then you, as you start talking about it, you get more and more worked up, right? And then all of a sudden you're in this hyper um, angry state. Um, and that, that can be difficult. The Jeffersonian strategy is somewhat helpful for some people, and this is where you count to 10. Um, or you can use avoidance and counter, encounter structuring or um, reappraisal, which was the other one I just mentioned. So those are some you'll want to look at. Um, the last emotion I'll briefly talk about, um, or the last two, excuse me, is grief and passion. Um, passion is an interesting emotion because it's a blended emotion. It is um, comprised of surprise with joy um, uh, and also has elements of excitement, amazement, and sexual attraction. So it's a really complex emotion, which is why we're like, you know, you got to keep the passion alive in interpers rom interpersonal romantic relationships. And that can be a really tall order because it's such a unique emotion, um, particularly because surprise is included as such a central part of it that it has to be new. Um, and so it really kind of does diminish over time in interpersonal relationships um, simply because surprise, um, you know, includes that newness element and that's very, very difficult to recreate. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't be fulfilled in a long-term relationship or happy or sexually satisfied at all, but it does mean that that particular feeling of passion um, might not be something that you can really maintain um, for long periods of time. And then grief, um, there's, there's, 
is, is a really important one. We all experience grief um, at some point in our lives. Um, and when, and it's an important one to understand just both for experiencing it and managing it as an emotion that we have, um, but also how we communicate with other people. So there's some guidelines you can go, that can, you can use to kind of manage those emotions that might be really important, um, for, you know, as, as you start dealing with grief or as you help other people deal with grief. You want to look at those. So that's all for this time. I'll see you next time.